All right, guys, welcome back to our last lecture on the age of Jackson and Manifest Destiny. Now, this is really going to focus on in on two migrations to the West, the first of these being the Mormons. Now, this has been a religious group that sort of emerged from the Second Great Awakening. They were founded by a man named Joseph Smith in upstate New York in the 1830s, and they practiced kind of some strange beliefs that were uncommon to the people at the time, in particular polygamy, meaning more than one wife. And... Because of this, they were discriminated against and forced to move from New York to Illinois to eventually Utah. Now, in Illinois, Joseph Smith is actually attacked by an angry mob and killed. And their new leader, Brigham Young, takes thousands of them to Utah in the largest single migration in American history. And there, despite the hardships of starting up a community in the desert, they actually, through some planning and organization, make it a successful uh, establishment. The problem is, is that their beliefs really run into conflict with the United States, and in 1848, with the creation of the Utah Territory, the government officials are now present, and they don't like the fact that non-Mormons are denied the right to vote. They don't like the fact that non-Mormon that non-Mormon businesses have any real say or opportunities, and they don't like the idea of polygamy. And it takes a long time, in fact, almost 50 years before Utah is able to make us able to become a state, and the Mormons are forced to give up a lot of their beliefs. 1848, Carpenter James Marshall finds a three-ounce nugget in the California River. Two months' pay in his hand, but billions of dollars beneath his feet. Now, in 1848, gold is actually discovered in California after thousands of American settlers have been moving out there. It's discovered by this guy named James Marshall, who'd been working for John Sutter, at his uh, sawmill, and when he discovers this gold, John Sutter keeps trying to tell him, hey, you need to keep this quiet here. Don't let word get out in the press about this. And here, we want to keep this gold here, here for us. Uh, as it turns out, they couldn't keep it a secret. It's printed in the newspapers there, and pretty soon everybody realizes, hey, there's gold out there in California. We need to go get some of this. So thousands of them rush out there, and then they fan out all over California, in the Sacramento Valley in particular, hunting for gold, either panning for it in the rivers or actually trying to mine for it. Within a year, 100,000 desperate amateur prospectors flood the Sierra foothills. It was the American dream distilled to its essence. Take yourself and go out and try and make a success of it. A Chinese prospector's 100-ounce strike in the Yuba River. $26,000 made by a single Irishman in just four days. A $200,000 super seam mined by 12 Mexicans at Bear Valley. In the port of San Francisco, a plot of land worth $16 before the gold strike now changes hands for $45,000. In two years, the population of California explodes from 15,000 to 100,000. Now, pan panning is replaced by lines of sluice boxes, desperately combing for anything the first prospectors missed. And the price of living rockets. Picks, pans, shovels go from a few cents to $10 a piece. Breakfast costs 10 times what it does back east. But still, the people come. Two hundred abandoned ships in San Francisco Harbor. The crews deserting, rushing for the hills. He's traveled 6,000 miles. He spent all his money. Now he travels by foot. Belgian Jean-Nicolas Perlot writes, We crossed 200 miles of wilderness full of Indians, bears, panthers, wildcats, snakes of every kind. The first thing he finds isn't gold, it's graves. 200 of them, 
prospectors cut off by rains in the foothills, starved to death. Approaching, we realized animals of some kind had dug up the bodies. I read a note attached to one of the graves. God has willed that civilization should begin in this place. It's this duty which a man owes to his kind. Bury the dead. Perlo does find gold, but never in the quantities that he dreamed. As the gold fields are picked clean, tensions rise. Time to get tougher. After just five years, the gold rush is over. I think that there is that Western uh, mentality of prospecting, uh, try and fail, try and fail, and the fact that you tried is worthy in and of itself. Of 300,000 who rushed to find gold, less than one out of a hundred struck it rich. But fortunes were made by the merchants and landowners who supplied the miners. From dirt and dreams came the great cities of California. Both the West and the American character that built it are settled. Now, the problem was is that mining is really expensive, requires a lot of heavy machinery, so most of them are just searching for panic on the surface here. But by panic for gold, sometimes you dammed up streams, and then you have fights breaking out over water rights, and they mostly ignored California's water laws. Uh, life in the mining towns was rough and tough. Uh, most of the towns had businesses and a lot of saloons. Not a whole lot of law and order, though. Okay? People just sort of took things, matters in their own hands. Vigilante groups were formed there. But pretty soon, towns started to spring up and become very thriving businesses and communities, just like San Francisco in there. Um, but it was a rough, rough time period there. Uh, there were 12 men for every one woman. Some of the women men, but most of them ran boarding houses, hotels, restaurants, long stores, sometimes working as dancing girls in casinos and some of the larger ones. Uh, but very, very few strike it, strike it rich. So gold is gone when area much of really picks up and moves. And there some would settle permanently. But California was sort of the interesting one. By 1870, San Francisco had a population of more than 100,000. Many of them were Chinese immigrants who moved in to cook, work the tailings in the mining fields. Slavery never really took hold in California because people hated the idea that it allowed some people not to work. And to build this country, you needed people to work. Native Americans would lose their land with 100,000 being killed in the gold rush. And the Californians who lived there, who had decades earlier been given grants under the Spanish rule, lost a lot of their land and money trying to hold on to what land they had. Thanks, guys, for paying attention. Hopefully we took good notes.